These are the five steps you need to get to 10K per month with surplus funds. All right, guys, welcome back to the channel. And if you're new here, welcome. My name is Spencer Van. It's a pleasure to have you here. And in today's video, I'm gonna be talking about the five steps you need to get to 10K per month with surplus funds. Now, I was inspired because one of my most popular videos about surplus funds is this video right here. It's the six steps from zero to 100K per month with surplus funds. Um, and we'll link that down below in the description and in the comments for you if you wanna check that out after this video. But I thought about it, I said, listen, for a lot of people, 100K per month is a dream and it's amazing and that's a great goal to shoot for. But you know, before you can get to 100, you're gonna get to 10, right? So I figure why not make another version of this video that's a little bit shorter because this video is about you know, 30 minutes long or so and it's focused on getting people that are just starting out that are beginners or maybe they've gotten one deal and getting them to a consistent 10K per month. So here are the five steps you need to do that. And of course, before I jump into it, make sure you hit the subscribe button and the notification bell because once per month we actually give away some free courses and you wanna get notified when we do a live stream to give those free courses away, otherwise you'll miss out. So if you're not subscribed, click this button to do so. And remember, of course, click that notification bell so you can be notified. So step number one to get to 10K per month is to pick your niche. Now, we teach a framework here at servicefund.com that there are four main niches. And those are as follows. Number one is state funds. Number two is mortgage funds. Number three is tax funds. And number four is bankruptcy funds. Now, I'm not gonna go through each niche in this video, but I will link to a video where I talk about picking your niche and kind of some pros and cons of each potential niche for you. But before you can really move on to those steps, you have to have a niche. Because if you don't have a niche, you can't pick a state because the state that you're gonna wanna operate in is gonna change based on the niche. You know, to give you an example, Florida, doing tax funds in Florida is super duper easy, okay? It's one of the best states to do it. Doing tax funds in, uh, or doing state funds in Florida is extremely difficult. You have to be in a, literally an accountant or an attorney or, or something like that, right? Uh, doing mortgage funds is possible in Florida, but a little bit more difficult. So even though it's all the same state, the niche actually changes whether you'd really wanna do that state or not. So if you wanna do state funds, Florida is not really a great state to go versus if you wanna do tax funds, it is, right? So before you can pick a state, you gotta pick a niche, right? And then that same thing with leads and, and all the other aspects that we're gonna talk about today. But before you can do anything, you gotta pick a niche. So I will link a video down below somewhere where you can check out more in depth some of the different niches. You know, if you haven't already, you gotta, you gotta pick one before you can move on. Step number two, once you have a niche, as I kind of foreshadowed a little bit, is to pick a state. I'll go through some of the states for some of them, you know, for each niche. State funds, obviously the most popular state is California. I don't necessarily recommend that because there's a lot of people going there, but it is a very easy state to set up in. Um, and the cool thing about state funds is honestly, uh, there's a lot of states you can do. Um, so I don't want to necessarily name states other than California because you guys know that's a really popular one on here because then everyone's going to flood to that state. But just know there's a lot of great states out there, okay? Then you've got mortgage funds. Now mortgage funds is interesting because you've got a situation where, you know, in some states with mortgage funds, you need an attorney. Um, and it's you know a difficult process. In some states, it's an easy process. In some states, you can only charge you know 10, 12 percent. Some states, you can charge as much as you want, right? Um, so I would really recommend doing your research. And the key thing you're looking for with mortgage and tax funds is how easy or difficult it is to process there, how much you can charge if there's a cap. Most states there's not, but some there are. Um, and kind of last but not least is how available or uh, how easy is it for you specifically to get the data, right? So that's what you wanna look for there. And then bankruptcy is pretty much, you can do it anywhere. It's not super complicated there. So if you're doing bankruptcy, you don't need to worry as much about what state you're operating in. Now the third step is how do you get leads? So once you've chosen your niche and chosen your state, well now part of that decision making is like, well, how do I get leads there, right? So if I'm doing state funds in California, I go on the California website, I download a list. If I'm doing state funds in a different state, maybe I have to pay some money, maybe they send me a CD, maybe I can go online, whatever it is. Same thing with mortgage overages and tax overages. Do you have a lead source for that state, okay? Um, that's really the key thing there. And once you have a lead source, then you know you can actually do business there. And that leads us to number four, which is, well, you've got a state, you've got a niche, and you've got a lead source. Well, the last step, uh, before we get to the fun part, in my opinion, is setting up your skip trace site. So don't be one of these guys that comes into this business that wants to make a lot of money, but is not willing to invest any money into anything. You know, the reality is in this business, you don't have to invest a lot of money to get started, but you do need to invest some money to get started. And my best opinion on this um, is 
you know, other than the education and the background knowledge you need, the other part you want to put the most amount of money in is your skip trace data. Because there's so many people I see start try to start this business with these free, you know, true people search and free sites like that. That's, you know, it's, listen, it's great. It's not an issue. But the reality is those sites are like five, maybe 10% accurate. And you're competing against people that are using sites like IDI Core, like TLO, that are 75, 80% accurate. So you're operating at, you know, 10% of what they are, right? It's not a recipe for massive success. It's gonna be very difficult. You're gonna make a lot of cold calls that are completely unnecessary. You're gonna spend a lot of time that's just going right to waste. And I don't know about you, but I don't like to throw away time because we can't make more time, right? We only have so much time on this planet, right? So I really recommend you invest in the best skip trace site possible. Now, uh, what does that look like for us? We're big advocates of IDI Core. You know, we use that in our business. Um, but there's some other sites as well. Um, I would just recommend that you go for the most accurate site that you can uh, personally afford. You know, IDI Core is a situation where you have to pay a couple hundred bucks a month, plus, you know, some money per search. Once you get past a certain amount of searches, it is an investment, but it's an investment that's worthwhile. So please, please, please pick a solid skip trace site. And if you want me to make a video on skip trace sites other than IDI Core that I recommend, you know, comment down below and maybe, you know, Cameron and I will get together and uh, make a, a cool video uh, talking about that. Once you do have that skip trace site set up, the last step is simply to build out your sales and marketing plan and then of course to execute on it. So for a lot of you guys, when that's starting out, that's just gonna be cold calls. And listen, that's okay. It's okay to start with just cold calls. In fact, that's honestly what I'd recommend most people do. You know, most of our scale mastery clients, when they come in, if they're new, that's what we have them do first. Even though we're going to eventually work with them automated marketing and some other avenues, you know, we, we want to start with uh, the basics and getting good at cold calling. And so that's really what I recommend most of you start with. Now, if you have access to some other resources that most people don't have, then maybe it changes. But regardless, you need a clear plan on how you're going to actually get clients. And so that's why that's the fifth step that you need to go out and actually get to 10K per month. And of course, you don't just need a plan, you need to execute on the plan. <laughs> that's why I said you gotta execute on it too. So hopefully that makes sense. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. I just wanna run through the quick five steps you need to get to 10K per month or more with surplus funds. And um, you know, I've seen this, five steps work over and over and over and over again for our clients, for our students. And I know it can do that for you as well. So with that being said, uh, if you enjoyed this video, drop a like down below, comment your thoughts and uh, comment any video ideas you guys have. You know, if you have a idea you want me to talk about a particular topic, you know, comment down below and maybe again, Cameron, my uh, amazing director and production guy uh, and I will get together and we'll make some videos for you guys explaining that particular subject. But with that being said, if you enjoyed this again, like the video down below, hit the subscribe button and the notification bell, and I will see you on the next video.